The Colombo family, formerly known as the Profaci family, is a family known for their internal strifes and a family that was involved in three wars dating back to the 1950s when Joe Gallo and his crew challenged the family boss, Joseph Profaci. The second war involved Joe Gallo again after his release from prison in 1971. This time, his beef was with the family's namesake, Joe Colombo, who was ultimately shot in June of 1971 at a rally in Columbus Circle. Although he survived the attempt, his days as a boss was old. That war ended the following year, on April 7, 1972, when Gallo was shot and killed at Umberto's Clam House in Manhattan's Little Italy. The Third Colombo War erupted in 1991, when the family was split into two factions. One led by the incarcerated official boss, Carmine Persico, and the other by acting boss, Vicarina, who Persico placed in the position in the late 80s. That war came to an end with the arrest of Arena in 1992 and the murder of his underboss, Joey Scopo, the following year in October of 1993. To say the Colombo family is accustomed to trouble would be an understatement. What history has shown in regard to the smaller family among the five families is their ability to operate with a fractured leadership. This past Thursday, the Colombo family consigliere, Ralphie Di Matteo, pled guilty in Brooklyn Federal Court to racketeering and money laundering. Back in September 2021, the FBI arrested 11 members and associates of the Columbos, including the family administration, which at the time consisted of the family boss, Andy Mush Russo, his underboss, Benjamin the Claw Castellazzo, and Ralphie Di Matteo the Consigliere. A day before the arrest took place, Di Matteo took a trip to Florida and wasn't at home when the FBI came knocking. However, his time as a fugitive was short-lived. After the arrest were announced, his son posted the following picture on Twitter of his father lounging in a pool. In addition to the photo, he added a rat emoji, which suggested there was an informant involved in the investigation. A much wiser person suggested it be taken down, and subsequently it was deleted, but the damage was done. Consequently, two days later, D. Matteo turned himself in to the FBI in New York. Accompanied by his lawyer, he walked into the Brooklyn Federal Courthouse and was arraigned by teleconference. During the call, he pled not guilty and was remanded. I previously did a video about Di Matteo surrendering, and I'll add that video's link in the description to this video. When the arrest first took place in 2021, one of the most factual statements made came from the FBI's assistant director, Michael Driscoll. These soldiers, consigliers, underbosses and bosses, are obviously not students of history and don't seem to comprehend that we're going to catch them. Regardless of how many times they fill the void we create in their ranks, our FBI organized crime task force and our law enforcement partners are positioned to take them out again and again. If you think about those words, and more importantly, the history of the mob, that's exactly what takes place. The government makes cases against a family, which creates vacant positions. The family then fills those positions, and the government targets those new people. It's a never-ending cycle. A key part of the case against the Columbos involved their attempt to shake down and take control of Local 621, a Queens-based laborers union, and its health care fund. In one recorded conversation, Colombo Captain Vinnie Union's Ricciardo is heard saying the following, I'm going to put an assistant administrator in there with you, a legitimate guy. You's are going to have a trustee meeting. You's are going to hire him as an assistant administrator, whatever the fuck you do, and he's going to call the shots. In another damaging recorded conversation, Vinnie Unions can be heard saying, I'll put him in the ground in front of his wife and kids, right in front of his fucking house. You laugh all you want, pal. I'm not afraid to go to jail. Not to be hypocritical. In that life, we all, including myself, have said stupid things when we were angry. But Vinnie Union saying he wants to kill a guy in front of his wife and kids is a testament to the lack of honor in that life. By no means am I suggesting it's okay to kill somebody. But if that's your intentions, leave their wife and more importantly, their kids out of the equation. For those of you who may not be familiar, Vinnie Unions is one of the Columbos that was shot while in a car heading to a wake in November of 1992. It was an attempted hit carried out by Vito Guzzo Jr., who was an associate at the time. He was avenging his father, Vito Sr., who disappeared during a 1987 hunting trip he was on with a few guys, including Vinnie Unions. Another person also involved in the 2021 case is Teddy Persico, one of the Colombo captains who in 2010 held an underboss position in the family. He's the nephew and heir apparent of the late Colombo boss Carmine Persico. During the investigation, the FBI used cell phone GPS data, wiretaps, 
license plate readers, and physical surveillance to track Persico's movements. This produced evidence of him meeting with the administration of the family, like the following picture of him meeting with Ralphie DiMatteo. At the time, Persico was on supervised release, which is federal probation. So meeting and associating with no felons or criminals is obviously a violation. And this information was used to deny him bail. During a meeting in 2020, Persico met with the Colombo leadership in the infamous Brooklyn restaurant Brennan and Carr, known for their roast beef sandwiches. At that meeting, the Colombo family's future was the topic of conversation. It was determined that Andy Mush would remain boss until Persico completed his supervised release, at which time he'd take the top position. Currently, Persico remains in the MDC in Brooklyn with the release date that's unknown. He'll either take a plea or fight the case. Speaking of pleas, as I mentioned in the beginning, Ralphie DiMatteo pled guilty this past Thursday, where he told the judge, I did and knowingly participate in racketeering in Brooklyn and the eastern part of New York. I did engage in extortion and money laundering conspiracy. At the time, I knew it was illegal. He's been free on a $5 million bond, which requires him to wear an electric monitoring device. Prior to him receiving bail, he continued to speak on the phone at the MDC. Phone calls that everyone knows are being recorded. During one call, he's telling a relative to stay off the phones to avoid the FBI from listening. The outcome of the investigation in this case revealed DiMatteo having many conversations while on the phone. So it's either ironic that he's given advice about staying off the phone or he learned his lesson. On another call, he advises a Colombo associate to stay away from a garage that the Colombos used as a meeting place because the FBI now knew about the location. And that specific garage was located in Gravesend, Brooklyn. In April of 2022, the Colombo family boss, Andy Mush, who was out on a $10 million bail, passed away at the age of 87. He was once recorded as saying he couldn't step down and retire. As he put it, I can't walk away, I can't rest. I believe at that point, Andy Mush seen the decline in the mob. At the moment, the Colombos most likely have a street boss or a panel running the family. I believe once Teddy Persico has all his legal troubles behind him, he'll take the reins. The problem with him is he can't seem to stay out of prison. I just quickly want to mention the super thanks icon underneath this video for anyone who'd like to support the channel. And thank you. Back to Ralphie. During my time in the life, I knew both Ralphie and his brother Luca, who was a captain in the family. At the time, Ralphie and I were both newly inducted members. And Ralphie was a member of Ralphie Lombardo's crew, who was a Colombo captain. Ralphie and I got close because we both lived on Long Island and we would often meet. I remember a prediction that he made that came to fruition. He predicted that Mikey DeSantis would be the boss. Ralphie has an upcoming sentencing date on October 5th, where he faces 41 to 51 months. So at the very worst, he'll do a little over four years. Not that bad and it sure beats 20. I always liked Ralphie and was honestly saddened when I heard he was in trouble. I wish him the best at his sentencing and hope his time goes by quickly. None of us in life are getting any younger. Unfortunately, prison will always be a part of that life. It's a terrible place to be. I know, I lived there for 17 years. In prison, the mob or whoever you are doesn't matter. Everyone is just considered a number. It's an environment full of people who thought they would never get caught. Meanwhile, everyone's locked up. Sometimes our paths are carved out for us. And for some of us, we unfortunately choose the wrong ones. But sometimes life changes our path and puts us on the right one. I don't know what the future holds for Ralphie. He'll have time to think about that. He may realize that that life ended a long time ago, or he may not. I'll end this with a saying by Helen Keller. Abandon the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn.